Pressing the go live button. All right. Ha. Hey. So we are live. All right. So let's see. Um. How are we doing? It's always always exciting to always exciting to listen to, to your your uh, you clicking on on the web pages. So hello everybody, uh, we are in the pre-show. Um, we're gonna start uh, in a couple of minutes uh, to do our live introduction of Mimo Live 5. Um, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments section and I'm gonna be seeing you here. I see Douglas, Carmichael, hello. And S2 tonight. Matema, Estudi Matematica. This is, I think, is Spain. Spanish, Spanish, probably, huh? All right. Um, I think I know who that is. Uh, all right. So before we go live, we will have a brief period where we just show the um, our logo. And uh, that will help us to mark the beginning of this demo. And we still got a couple of minutes and give you some time to um, give people some time to uh, log in and uh, join the stream. Oh, yes. <coughs> uh, we've got more viewers coming in. And uh, if you're there, just let us know. Stepan. Stepan, Stepan, Stefan, Stefan, David, Christopher, Solomon, hi. Um, Achim is your best friend, yes? <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, good, good, good. All right. Keep. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. All right. Give us a couple more minutes, uh, or we give you a couple more minutes to join. Chuck Braverman, hi. Uh, glad to have you back. Um, looking forward to your comments and questions at the end of the live stream. Um, all right. Good, good. Uh, I think is the uh, has the notification gone out yet to our uh, subscribers? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I didn't get a notification right now, but even our any. mom is watching. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Hi, mom. We're on TV. Um, all right. So um, just a couple of things uh, before we get this started. I'm... Uh, streaming over a uh, network that has a not so great upload link so if we are dropping out i apologize for that and uh, but other than that uh, we are using memo live 5 here so it's uh, it's gonna be our pain <laughs> um, and uh, bastian joined hey basti good to good to hear from good you good old friend good he old grabbed friend. already some popcorn so popcorn lay back Yay. and enjoy okay so uh the mathematician got a couple of notifications already so can we shout out your friend hugh jess all right let me see i can just uh i can put that in here flat top fury can you please shout out my friend hugh Jazz. So, yeah, shout. <laughs> so, that's cool. All right. So I think um, I think we should get started with this live stream, and um, um, we should. Uh, hey, John. John Idelson. <coughs> uh, hello to Monterey. Um, so I'm gonna quickly just uh, put up a uh, blank screen uh, with uh, uh, the information, the start, start screen, and we'll be right back.
So, welcome back to the live stream for Mimo Live 5. We're so excited to be able to show you version 5 uh, of Mimo Live. Uh, we've been um, working on that um, version for quite a while and uh, uh, as we are now in a new model where we have more releases every time, um, we uh, just decided uh, to that it's time to call it um, the next new major version because we have great new features in this new major version. And um, I'm joined by Achim, uh, my brother, uh, who you know probably from other streams, and he's going to do the demos and I'm going to do the talking and uh, so and and running this show and uh, so I hope uh, you guys have uh, lots of question and questions and if you have questions um, we will be answering them uh, to at the end of after the demo after the brief demo Achim is doing uh, of the features and uh, just feel free to uh, uh, post them in the chat and we'll bring you in and answer the questions and. Uh, whatever the questions are, uh, we try to answer all the questions uh, until we are done. <laughs> okay, so um, let's kick this off, Achim. Um, major new version, uh, major new features. Um, one of the biggest things is, I think, the new start screen uh, because uh, we are now have more focus on templates and the templates are interesting because we uh, they help you get up to speed and they show um, uh, they show the different use cases for meme life and they if you have one of those use cases the templates help you um, to learn how to do it and uh, get started quicker and i think that's a big thing especially for new users achim can you show us how that works. Sure. So uh, you, um, in, uh, yeah, w what I mentioned w uh, is that we uh, almost committed 500 commits to our code base. And if you are in, in coding and uh, then you will know that is quite a big, big leap um, for a new version. And uh, that's why it really deserves to be called uh, uh, 5.0. Um, yeah, in Mimo Live 5, we have uh, templates um, in, in the new document uh, screen. And uh, on my desk, I have the Mimo Live right here. And once I start it, um, you can see all the uh, templates already we, we now ship with uh, Mimo Live directly. So um, once we scroll through the templates, there are um, so the the templates are thought of uh, little tutorials to cover several uh, f feature sets in Mimo Live. So once you walk through them and do one tutorial after the other, you will get quite uh, an overview of all the or most of the features in in Mimo Live, and certainly we want to add some more so to get uh, the tutorial for each um, template you find a little question mark uh, in the upper right corner and once you click it you get uh, re redirected to um, our documentation our online documentation and you will see uh, a step-by-step -step tutorial how to uh, work with each of those templates and uh, see what to set up and uh, what you will get in the end of it. So, uh, for example, I will uh, show you the call-in show um, that's covering Mimo call and um, some aspects of an out, uh, of the audio. Uh, engine in Mimo Live because you need to set up a little bit um, for the audio for the host. So uh, just to mention you will learn uh, what a Mimo call source is and how to set this up. Um, how to, and each of those callers can be in your show and in the upper right corner you see uh, the program out uh, showing all 
the three sources like my my own camera and the two Mimo callers. And the second aspect is um, audio mixes. Uh, we have an audio mix panel and uh, you can create your own audio mixes. In this case we have a special audio mix for the host which means the main camera for this is muted and so the uh, host doesn't hear uh, himself in the headset for example. So I hope <coughs> that you uh, We'll, we'll try some of the uh, templates. Um, there's a lot of information in the online uh, documentation. And uh, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot, a lot to learn. Thank you for that demo, Achim. I think uh, this is, this is a, a real good thing for uh, new users, but also for users, experienced users, uh, to discover new features or features that are a little bit deeper in the application. There's a lot, 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 a lot of stuff to discover and the templates uh, surely help you to um, expand your use of Mimo Live. So um, that's, uh, that's the one uh, big change is the, uh, uh, the uh, launch window, the, the, the window that you get when, uh, when you launch uh, Mimo Live the first time. And the second big thing is the layer sets. And the layer sets uh, is basically uh, something that allows you to much better control um, uh, what's happening on the screen. And Achim, I think yeah, it's it's your turn to do a demo of the layer sets. Yes, uh, I have prepared a little document. Uh, just want to mention that uh, we released Mimo Life uh, 5.0 just a couple of hours ago, so you probably can. Uh, hit the update button in, in Mimo Live and install it already. So I just prepared a little uh, demo, uh, demo document to demo the layer sets. Um, the layer sets come uh, below here, below the layer stack. And basically it will capture the live states for each layer. So uh, if a layer is off, or if the layer is on. Um, in this situation, we have um, a little studio in, in mind, like having an anchor woman and, for example, a weatherman uh, discussing the weather. Um, in this, in the first uh, set, I want to capture the situation when the anchor woman is in front of its virtual studio and Bastian. Thank you for the background. You will notice it. Actually, uh, we, we keyed her, so we have two layers, um, one for the camera and one for the background. Now I capture the layer set with the plus button here, and I can give it a name by double clicking on the name itself. Let's say Studio. So now I will switch the layers to uh, have the the different situation like uh, for the weatherman and in this uh, I don't want to see the crawler I just want to see the weather map uh, in its own so I capture again the new layer stack uh, situation and call it weather and now I have those uh, recall buttons here and once I press them, you can uh, see that all the layers get changed in one set, in one switch. And we are back to the studio situation. Now I can switch to the weather again and so on. So one thing you will probably notice that the new scrawler at the bottom here uh, has a out transition. So once I switch to the weather, the new scrawler will disappear with a transition. And I don't want that. So I, w I want to disappear immediately. Um, you can fine tune the, uh, the layer set and it, it uh, actions with this action gear here. And um, for the new scroll, I will ha I want to have it 
force off so it will switch off immediately um, and this will look like this uh, switching on this is the studio and now once I go back to the weatherman you can see that the new scrawler will be away immediately here we go and uh, of course I want to see the station logo the station logo uh, can be sw switched on and uh, also for the weather now once i switch the the layers uh, uh, the layer sets then the station logo will be on as well um, but there may be uh, situations w where you don't want to switch um, or change the live state of a layer um, by switching a certain layer set so you can define a no action option for the station logo and uh, I will do this for the weather as well now the station logo layer isn't touched and once I switch uh, it, it will keep just will keep uh, being live and once I switch it off and I switch again between the studio and the weather map uh, the station logo will keep uh, switched off so uh, that you don't have for those for those uh, f people that uh, are fond of uh, hitting the keyboard rather than clicking with the mouse in the UI you can of course have a shortcut um, for each of your sets so I just uh, will assign in command Y and uh, command X so I can easily use command Y on my keyboard and command X on my keyboard to switch between those uh, layer sets and uh, also so you can use um, uh, third-party devices uh, like the ex uh, Elgato streaming deck for example to send keyboard commands to Mimo Live to switch the layer set also uh, it is available and accessible from our remote control surfaces just a short quick demo um, so the remote control surface is uh, running in a browser and you can use it from any device so for example from an from a tablet and uh, that's very convenient I created just a new uh, surface and place a new button here. I'm adding, uh, I'm changing the behavior of this custom button. Uh, studio. I want to have a new action, and the action should be layer set recall studio. I want to see that the studio is live. So I use the layer sets studio as well and now I want to add another button another custom button call this weather again choose the the action to recall the weather layer set and have an indicator of the we weather layer set as well now I switch back to live so my um, co control surface is active and in the background you can see once I switch to the studio or back to the weather it does it immediately and also the indicator shows that the switch happened well I think uh, I think that's so, a, a real great feature Achim, do you hear me yes yeah okay I hear you. Just, sure. just make, make sure. So um, I think that's a, a really great feature. Um, allows much more um, easy control um, of, of, uh, of, the, of Mimo Life in, uh, for example, in schools where they have like a, a, a morning announcement program and want to switch between the anchors and the weather and switch, uh, switch out um, uh, all the backgrounds and, and, uh, and, and things like that. Okay, um, that's, tr that's let's right. Come back and uh, there's, of course, there's uh, documentation 
on uh, on the layer set as well documentation so uh, there you can read a lot of about a lot of information about that and of All course right. we do, uh, we doing a q and a on this okay later on later on um, just a couple more things to note about Mimulai 5. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's available for download already. Uh, you can use this QR code, which I created with our QR code layer that you can download from the additional layers page. Um, you just type in, uh, <laughs> just type in uh, the URL uh, you want to show on screen and uh, there it goes um, and uh, this is where you can get Mimulai 5 if you have a valid subscription um, you can just use it um, and uh, there's no upgrade fee uh, of course that's the advantage of having a uh, subscription based model and also um, uh, you, you will get an update notification once you run Mimulai that the new version is available um, all right, so turn that off again. Um, all right, but what else do we have in Mimulai 5, Achim? Yeah, um, we, we are currently live streaming to YouTube and uh, the often the problem is uh, that you need to uh, switch off the, the live stream again because some internet connection problems or um, something uh, uh, strange is happening and then you can uh, you want to uh, a, in the past Mimo Life was uh, just uh, quitting and and uh, closing the event you created in YouTube and uh, closing an event on YouTube um, means that you can't stream again to it so your audience was lost because you can't uh, keep up and and uh, uh, do a new streaming to the same uh, event again. And we added an option for this in the live streaming um, output destination. So you, you want can to show that, or uh, is that is that? Oh, actually, nice. I didn't. Haha, I didn't prepare that. <laughs> okay, no, no, no um, we don't. We don't have to. So. Yeah, so th this option actually uh, allows you to uh, uh, disable this uh, function that Mimo Life will automatically close the event uh, when you close the uh, live stream. So for security purpose, you can switch it off while you're running the show. And uh, once you're really sure that you uh, want to close the stream, then you uh, switch on that button and and uh, turn off the live stream and always keep in mind that uh, the live stream is immediately shut down uh, uh, you switch it off in Mimo live um, and all your audience will be cut off as well in that time even if, if uh, there is a delay of about uh, 10 to 20 seconds uh, so that the the 10 or 20 seconds are lost and your audience couldn't um, see them. So this is not a, a bug in Mimo Life. This is uh, because uh, YouTube is that way. So um, keep on streaming for 10 to 20 seconds after you, uh, you really sh uh, uh, your show uh, is over and just present a black screen or something or play some nice music and uh, wait until the 10 to 20 seconds to all the buffers uh, are streamed out and then uh, then you can safely uh, shut down the, the live stream in Mimo Live. Yeah, I think that's a very important um, uh, tip and uh, we, you're going to see this at the end of this broadcast and uh, at the end of all our broadcasts we do this. Just uh, keep the stream running until everybody has the, had the chance to see uh, all of it. Uh, but that was not the features I was <laughs> referring to. Uh, I was uh, thinking about the video sync meter layer. How, what's the story behind that? Okay, <coughs> the video sync layer. Sure. Um, the, there might be situations where you have 
multiple different uh, uh, hardware uh, like a webcam, like an SDI input, like a Blackmagic design, uh, a capture card, or what have you. And each of those hardwares will have a different delay. That's just because each hardware has its own buffering. Um, the software in the computer, uh, the, the drivers to bring the, the video data to Mimo Live takes a time, for example. And uh, uh, webcams used to be very fast, so they are a little bit ahead. And uh, maybe this is not really noticeable, but uh, the quality of your stream is once you switch between the cameras, you will get uh, jumping for and back in time because of a slightly delay uh, and, and time differences in the, in the video signals coming in into Mimo Live. So we created um, a video uh, sync meter layer that's similar to the audio sync uh, meter we already had to sync audio input devices. So you have uh, the very same movie uh, showing a white uh, and a, uh, alternating white and black color with um, and and the and the white no noise to it, and you uh, you should uh, capture this video on your phone, for example, and uh, f from all your video devices, and the video sync meter will uh, measure the time delay between those uh, video devices so we can uh, adjust it. Um, there is a video delay filter and uh, you apply it to a video source and uh, there you can enter how many frames this particular uh, video source should be delayed. And uh, in the end you can uh, sync all your video cameras to the uh, same uh, video frame at least on, on, a, on a single frame base. Um, and once you have done this, then we recommend that you also use the audio sync meter um, in, uh, uh, to, to measure the audio delay again with the, because of the same uh, hardware limitations you have. And the video delay uh, usually tends to be uh, longer than if you have the audio on a separate um, input device, then uh, you need to delay the uh, audio as well. So both uh, the video sync um, meter and the audio sync meter, uh, there's also an uh, online documentation about that, how, how this exactly works and a step-by-step instructions to to how to do this um so yeah i think that's a very useful feature we've uh, recently uh, been in cologne uh live streaming a, a concert from uh, uh, the cologne uh, co pop festival and um, we used the uh, sdi cameras and ndi cameras and uh, used the, uh, the the meter uh, uh, the uh, video sync meter uh, to uh, uh, see if there's a, a difference between the, the NDI and SDI cameras. And it turns out it's just a one frame difference. So we didn't have to use even the delay um, uh, feature um, to sync those two uh, sources. And we were able to use uh, both NDI and SDI at the same time, uh, which, which was a great thing. And uh, you can check out our blog for a uh, uh, description how we did that behind the scenes video cool video made by uh, Tobias and uh, uh, thanks uh, to uh, Steffen our uh, Mimo Life uh, head of marketing uh, who pulled this uh, uh, event together uh, you will be able to have a, a, a nice uh, uh, nice overview on how we do um, how, how we did this um, one other thing, uh, two other things uh, uh, quickly mentioned, uh, besides of lots of uh, bug fixes, and there's uh, the, the, um, the release notes are as always like three pages of, of uh, items, uh, hundreds of, no, maybe not hundreds, but uh, dozens of uh, news and fixed uh, uh, things. Um, two things uh, I just want to quickly mention before we go to the uh, Q&A. 
uh, is uh, media source replace and drag and drop. Maybe Achim, um, you can demo that quickly or um, at least um, tell us what it's about. Yeah, uh, if you set up a document and you uh, start with uh, images um, and you put them all over your layer set and, and your layer stack, um, and then you realize that, oh, this is the wrong media file. I, I need to replace it because there's some, uh, some error in it. Uh, then it was tedious in, in the old time that you have to add the new media file to Memo Life and then reassign all your layers uh, to that source. And now we have uh, an menu menu item to actually replace a single media file and I can uh, just demo it if you want to Oliver yes please so uh, this is all again on my screen, screen. Um, you see the the for example I have a background um, my weather map is the wrong one so I just click on this action gear here for the for this particular re um, image source I can uh, select replace image and I will be asked to find a new uh, image. Let's see I just use uh, the screenshot and uh, it gets replaced immediately. You see all the layers are updated and uh, with this I guess you can save a lot of time uh, in your production. Yeah that's that's um, that's that's very very useful I think and uh, drag and drop between documents and yeah, and drag and drop. Um, let me show how this works. I create a new blank document uh, real quickly. Um, once you uh, create, uh, uh, oh, I'm getting the spinning beach ball. So oh, this is okay. not quite nice. So the idea is that you can uh, drag and drop between two documents, the media files as well as the uh, the sources. And if you uh, drag a layer um, like a lower third, for example, um, you you were able to copy actually the layer already, but uh, it didn't carry the uh, media files with it and uh, now it will also carry the media files with it from one document to the other. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, apart from lots of lots of fixes um, uh, and those features um, which are new as the templates, uh, just to recap uh, quickly, uh, we uh, got uh, uh, no more emphasis on the templates to allow people who are new to Mimo Life to uh, be able to get to what they want to do quicker and also for experienced Mimo Life users to be able to discover new features that they haven't seen or used before. Um, we've got the layer sets, which is the real big new thing, uh, allows you to switch between, uh, uh, allows you to switch a lot of layers at the same time. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in, a, in a defined way get back to um, a state uh, of the layer stack that you wanted before. For example, um, in the classroom, if you do um, a, news, uh, a news show, daily news show, uh, you can easily switch from um, showing the anchor people in front of a green screen with the background to a weather person uh, in front of a different green screen with a different background and uh, switch out that all of uh, at the same time. Um, the video sync meter allows you to um, synchronize uh, video sources of uh, from different vendors or di different technologies that will or may give you different delays. Uh, the media source replace feature lets you switch out media files uh, that you've used all over your layer stack uh, and uh, you want to update, uh, for example, if you have a rebranding, want to replace the logo, uh, then you can do that uh, in one place and just replace the, uh, uh, the, um, the, the uh, media file. And drag and drop between uh, documents uh, allows you to um, reuse um, all the settings uh, that you've done uh, in a layer uh, in a no new document, which is also very nice. All right, so um, I think it's time to go to 
uh, Q&A. Uh, I saw that uh, a lot of people already posted questions. I will scroll back a little bit, I think, and uh, see where the first um, questions were. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, we had all these. All right, uh, this is not a question, but uh, a very nice comment. Thank you very much. Uh, Messianic Torah Observant Israel. <laughs> My name is Marty. My organization just tried to show with the addition of a remote event by our director. He was in Ohio and the rest was in, in Tennessee. I used Mimo Call, which worked fairly well. You see, uh, we use Mimo Call as well, and it works quite nicely. Achim has two connections. Uh, to uh, my computer, one for the screen and one for uh, uh, his webcam, and I can switch and do all the all the things. Um, um, Marty also had a question. Let me just go and find it uh, in my list here. Um, uh, but I would like to know if it's possible to have separate AV output for certain layers. Um, there are a few tricks you can do, and I think Yofi also uh, already told you a couple of those in the in the comments. Um, for example, you can use um, a siphon uh, layer to output the video at a certain time in the layer stack, uh, and you can use multiple documents uh, to write out multiple parts of the um, of the layer stack. But we are also working on having uh, the uh, output destinations being able to choose uh, what to display and that's going to be the next big feature coming up uh, maybe soon, five, maybe sooner five, five than later. 5.0 is not the latest <laughs> and the five last dot version we're doing. 5.0 is not the last version and we will have more uh, for you to play with. Um, all right. Uh, uh, alternative plan um, says love these layer sets. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. And uh, Stefan yeah, also at, says at this point, I want to uh, give this big thank you uh, to my developer team. They did a great job on on all the new features, and uh, I'm very happy with this. Yes, thank I you. think it's a it's a great release. Um, everybody did a good job on this. Um, uh all right so questions um uh, let me see if i find any more questions uh adam fenton uh i'm new to leave me life can you review what where and where you can send the output video is it like otf um I'm not sure what you mean by OTF. Um, I can just uh, try to just quickly give you an overview of where you can send all the video. You can record it to disk. You can stream it via RTMP. I so can multiple. show the, the output destination. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Let me just uh, let me just switch to Achim's desktop, then we can see the output. So just creating a new document. Um, the output uh, destinations are on the right side and with the plus button you can choose from a variety of outputs uh, for example full screen output you can uh, bring out the video to the secondary um, display port of your Mac um, we can uh, directly record disk uh, in uh, we can certainly live stream to different t platforms or uh, to a custom RTMP uh, we can play out to uh, natively to Blackmagic design hardware that's uh, there's a special list on uh, devices that we support and uh, there is an NDI output that uh, NDI by NewTek that's a technology to send uh, video low latency with low latency over Ethernet it's it's a very convenient uh, way to bring video from one computer to the other or uh, get a video signal from an NDI's um, Camera uh, for example. my NDI camera, You're right? Yes. The virtual uh, camera a plugin here uh, needs to be installed separately, but uh, once you did, um, the Mac itself will realize Mimo Live as a virtual camera, as a camera, and can provide this to other applications. Um, for example, for uh, Zoom or uh, Google Hangout or Skype or what have you. 
All right. Cool. So ah, I, I, I forgot to mention the audio aux uh, output. Oh, yeah. Um, that's mm -hmm. uh, especially for the audio out. And you can uh, out um, put the, the audio mix to a certain hardware uh, you have connected to your Mac. Um, and, and you can create uh, different audio out outputs. So, for example, yeah. you can have uh, one, one for a moderator, uh, one for the operator, and one for the audience in your room, and so on and so forth. That's correct. All right. Good, good, good. Um, back to questions. What are the minimum hardware requirements? Paduka2 asks. Uh, that is a very different, difficult question because um, uh, di it really depends on what you want to do. Uh, for example, uh, if you want to use many different uh, sources and stream to many different um, uh, output destinations at the clan event um, uh, at, uh, the, the live concert I taught you uh, talked about earlier and you can find the behind the scenes post on our website on our blog um, uh, we were using an iMac Pro uh, with 10 cores and that was idling along almost because uh, it you know it didn't have to do as much as we thought it would have to do and we were streaming to Facebook and YouTube and we were switching seven cameras, um, three uh, SDI cameras, uh, using a, uh, a Blackmagic box to capture those uh, sources, two NDI cameras, and we ha also had uh, two Mimo Live uh, Mimo calls uh, set up so then that uh, some people could use their iPhones uh, roaming about in the audience of the concert um, and capturing uh, from there. And uh, as I said, um, it wasn't um, it wasn't fully uh, maxed out. Um, I'm running this show here uh, on a Mac Mini uh, with uh, I think four co now six cores, and uh, <coughs> we're doing uh, two Mimo calls. I have an NDI camera. I have a backup uh, USB camera. Uh, we're streaming uh, to YouTube, um, and we also can stream to uh, one other. I'm recording in. ProRes to the disk and um, this this works fairly well. Um, so um, it really depends on what you want to do. Uh, most um, I would recommend to get a computer with a uh, with a, a discrete uh, uh, graphics card. Though uh, the Mac Mini turns out I cannot use my ultra wide screen um, with Mimo Live because the um, the graphics card is already, um, you know, uh, using a lot of resources, and um, uh, that is uh, not working out well. Um, and also, right. uh, I guess we need to uh, mention the t thermal uh, throttling problem. Um, if you, yes. if we we see a lot of people uh, running Mimo Live on a uh, MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. uh, this oh. is. Uh, Really a nice machine, and uh, the the uh, down the only pitfall and da downside is that the hardware isn't uh, built to run in in with with uh, full power for a long time. So if you plan to do a long time uh, show, then uh, MacBook Pro is probably not the best choice because it gets hot. Oh, you have and to the cool in it. Yeah. yeah, the 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 build in. Uh, fans mm, are yeah. not able to cool it uh, down enough so the cpu gets throttled um, by the system and there is nothing we can do about it uh, certainly it's uh, to protect the hardware from uh, getting burned <laughs> over, over uh, and uh, so w we came up with uh, external cooling and uh, by ice bags for example or uh, there's a, a certain hardware to to have uh, more fans around it but if you can uh, use a different Mac, like a desktop uh, iMac, then this would be a better choice for for long time um, uh, shows. Yeah, we have more questions. We have more questions. We don't have to make up any. <laughs> so, <that's good. laughs> um, so we've got this question, and that's something for you, Achim. Northern Visual Visions one li likes to know: Is it possible to output onto format? QuickTime PAL 16 to 9, 720 by 576 UK broadcast standard. Um, I think that's a, that's a question. Can we do 
um, anamorphic, can we do non-square pixels? Is I think is the problem because 720 by 576 is uh, 4 to 3, and um, you uh, if you want to 60 by to 16 by 9, then uh, the pixels are um, stretched uh, vertically, and um, uh, we can Mimo Life can use. Uh, any arbitrary um, uh, uh, resolution, so we can do uh, portrait or landscape. Uh, you can do 380, 3840 by 1080, which I did uh, recently. Um, so I have two cameras side by side um, and can sen send them off to the editor in the same video file. For some reason, I wanted to do that. Um, and um, we can do uh, two. 2000 by 100 pixels or whatever format you want or square format or you know um, 720 by um, uh, 12 uh, something for for uh, uh, portrait for the, videos, uh, portrait videos. Um, uh, Achim can we do uh, can we do uh, non square pixels unfortunately uh, we don't uh, do s non square pixels um, yeah, we we based on on uh, on digital hardware, not analog. So we choose to uh, keep pixel square. But, but certainly you can uh, record in in yeah yeah you can you can uh, record uh, the the QuickTime file of course in 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 the proper format with square pixels and then use. Uh, uh, Convert us to uh, for example, uh, create to convert, yeah. uh, create the correct uh, the correct format you will yes. need. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. What the so yeah next question. Would the video sync work with more extreme delays such as running NDI over Wi-Fi? Yeah, <laughs> so this is a uh, this is a trick question because what you actually want to do is speed up things. You don't want to <laughs> delay things in that case. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but I think I understand what you want. You have one uh, if you have one NDI source that's coming in over Wi-Fi and then uh, one that's coming in over cable. You can certainly use the feature to delay. However, uh, in our experience, Wi-Fi never gives you a sort of like a constant. Um, uh, a constant delay, so varying delays we cannot handle yet. Um, NDI is uh, working on a new version, NDI 4, and as soon as that's available, we're going to use it. And they use some technology to embed um, timecode into um, the NDI signal. And uh, the idea is that you will be able to synchronize multiple NDI as, uh, signals using that embedded information instead of. Uh, creating a, a, a manual uh, delay, uh, we can we might be able. We, we don't know yet if that if that works, but uh, that's certainly the idea. We might be able to just synchronize multiple NDI streams without having to delay one single um, source uh, separately. And in uh, in in Mimo Live itself, um, you need to run the video delay uh, filter on a video source and this uh, basically captures all the video frames in the graphics card uh, you want to delay so you need to have a big uh, uh, memory in in the in the graphics card uh, memory space so uh, to to do uh, long delays all right so we have uh would be nice if the output destinations would not fold up when loading a scene. I don't really understand the question. Ahem, do you know what he's uh, referring to? So if you uh, might be uh, clearing that up for us, we will get back to that question later. What what exactly do you mean? Um, um, I th uh, yeah, to, to bring this in context, I think th um, the the audio, uh, the the output destination itself can uh, be uh, collapsed, collapsed. Mm -hmm. um, to have uh, more s uh, real estate on the screen. Um, but I think and I hope that it isn't uh, doing this automatically by itself. So it should only be um, following pop a user up or uh, 
yeah user it's action only, so if you double click action. on the uh, on the on the thing yeah all right uh another question here paduka uh it would also be nice if each layer could have its own ndi output ah aha so I think if you want to use MemoLife to provide uh, several NDI sources, uh, NDI sources to your network uh, using different layers, you can do that by using separate uh, documents. You can have like two or three or four documents with um, using for creating the, um, the uh, for example, uh, converting the input of a webcam to an NDI stream or uh, uh, doing, uh, uh, you know, playing out the uh, weather map uh, or something uh, to NDI. Uh, just make um, multiple uh, documents and uh, have all of them uh, send out NDI. You will run into some performance issues uh, after a couple of documents. I don't know how many documents you can do. Um, but uh, you should be able to do more than one, uh, maybe two, three, four, uh, and uh, use that uh, in this way. Um, all right. Uh, Junger, just another complaint uh, and opacity in graph 3D layer when using solid color still doesn't work. I think we'll take that onto our bug list and uh, fix that as soon as possible. Uh, I, I can see Achim, uh, Achim's mind already turning and he maybe uh, he's starting up Xcode live on the second machine and fixes it right away. Uh, so I think, uh, uh, yeah, thank you for reporting that and uh, we'll certainly uh, look into that. Um, yeah, it actually I, I uh, just tried and it, uh, he is right. Um, just let's see, uh, let's get do it it's even even with a, a gradient it doesn't do it um, but as a workaround you can switch to a uh, custom as a background uh, type and just select none as a source so um, at least you can uh, have it in a transparent uh, okay oh right yeah now. but I, I take so a note we, we and do, we'll, we we do will live fix it. Uh, we also do live tech support here <laughs> all right so let's, I, I'm trying something and I uh, got this comment and I just wanted to see if the uh, emojis are uh, properly, properly represented here. Uh, Douglas, um, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for another war. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the kind words. Thank you. Um, the audio aux is very well designed. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, that's, that's also a nice compliment. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, Yofi, the big advantage for mixing audio out in MimoLife is that you can do mix minus with it, yes, and we automate that for the Mimo calls, so the people who call in all, all automatically get a mix minus, which is the audio signal minus their own audio, so they don't hear themselves as an echo. Um, all right, uh, what do we have? What other comments? How to connect? How to connect three Blackmagic mini recorder? Any Mac only supports two pieces. Stepan, um, that's correct. We can't do uh, three Blackmagic mini recorders on a Mac today. Um, what we recommend is to use a, uh, an, a PCIe extender box. Uh, there's a couple of vendors uh, selling those and then put a Blackmagic uh, dual uh, two or quad card into it and that gives you four or eight SDI inputs. Uh, it's a little more expensive than the three mini recorders, I grant you that, but also more performant. Uh, it doesn't take up, the, uh, it, it, it only takes up the bandwidth of the single card and not uh, the bandwidth of three different cards. So uh, that's um, absolutely the best <coughs> way to do it if you want to do uh, more than two um, uh, SDI inputs. Also, if you're doing N uh, HDMI inputs, there is a uh, is the option to add USB 3 uh, and the uh, capture devices, uh, so you can have um, two Blackmagic mini recorders uh, and one uh, USB 3 um, device. Um, however, 
um, I, I strongly recommend to go with the box and the uh, card that has the multiple inputs um, that um, is not and only this is amazingly it's, it's just one cable to your Mac uh, carrying yes. all eight yes. videos, <laughs> video yes. signals, so that's which really uh, makes it much e more easy to set up, uh, and you don't trip over all the uh, all the cables, and you don't uh, disconnect them by mistake. All right. Um. <coughs> Douglas, question. It's interesting you get a uh, decent performance out of a Mac Mini. Does it have hardware video encoding? Yes, indeed it does. So uh, I don't get a performance hit from using the H.264 um, video encoding, but I do get a, a, a performance hit from using the NDI camera, which I'm doing here. So my camera is actually an N Lumens NDI uh, HX uh, PTC camera. And um, there's a slight performance hit because that still does uh, decoding in uh, software. Um, but uh, NDI 4 promises to change that as well. So we will be able to do more NDI sources even there. And um, I'm looking forward to actually implement that. All right, Douglas has another tech support question. I don't uh, think, uh, let me see. Uh, when I stream from Ableton Live or other audio applications using either routing through my audio interface and using loopback, the monitoring latency is too high. Um, yeah, we have to follow up with you on that separately. I don't know uh, if that is the. This is uh, not. The, I think yeah, we should we should take that uh, to just email Achim and we'll we'll talk about that. Um, all right. Um, uh, John Itelson, uh, have you tested the MacBook Pro just released? No, we did. We have not because we don't have one. Uh, we <laughs> we are based in Europe. Uh, I think we can order them. I don't know if they are already delivered, and also they are damn expensive, so I can't just buy one just for fun. Um, we. Um, Will I, I? I would assume that it, it's a fairly good uh, uh, performance. It would be interesting to see if you run into that thermal throttling problem. The MacBook Pro certainly now with the uh, I think eight cores um, i9 uh, certainly is a power machine. Um, I I'm not sure if the if the thermal throttling. Um, Achim has a MacBook Pro that is not as ex affected uh, by the thermal throttling problem than my older MacBook 15-inch uh, MacBook Pro, so uh, it might be better with the newer versions and the newer generations of the i9. Um, if the machine has more power to uh, work, um, then it doesn't um, uh, take as much energy and maybe the heat dissipation works better there. All right, good, good, good. Um, um Stepan has a question. I think that's also a tech support question, which we may be able to deal better if you email Achim or support. Um, uh, I have some eatings processor when follow layer is on. Yes, the follow layer does some computing and it takes some time, uh, but it's a cool, damn cool uh, layer. And uh, I think we will do more with it in the future. Um, uh, how long a show is a long time show? <laughs> uh, so so the question maybe is, what's the maximum time a show can be? And I think uh, we oh have I some I people I think doing he's referring seven. to the thermal throttling. Ah, uh, okay. Because I mentioned don't do a long time sure. show on on the MacBook Pro. All right, so l let me just, uh, um, the thermal throttling, um, uh, you might want to make sure that you um, test it uh, uh, in the environment. We had uh, issue, we, and also uh, keep in mind that if you have sun uh, uh, shining on your computer or if it's hot in the room, uh, then that uh, contributes to uh, the problem, um, we, I, I bought a fan that I could put under the uh, uh, computer and that helped a lot. We 
used ice cubes to cool the computer and that helps also so i don't think it's um it's as much as it's much uh, 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 it's it's as much a problem of the time but of the circumstances and environment and you might want to test and and see that you uh, keep an eye out for that problem um apart from the uh heating problem if you have that um figured out if you um uh if you uh, use the fans and and uh, g get it to cool down uh, then uh, we we did um, we did th three four five hour shows uh, also just we had to keep an eye on the thermal problem and uh, and cool the computer and that uh, that helped a lot so and there is a tool by intel um to monitor actually the, uh, the cpu temperature and uh, the cpu speed uh, yeah, it's Oliver, the what Intel it's Power. Called? It's the Intel Power. Right. <coughs> sorry, um, the Intel Power um, uh, gadget. gadget. The Intel Power gadget. I'm running it here right now for seeing if I can, uh, if if I spot any problems with this machine, um, and uh, use that and watch the processor and uh, how it uh, heats up and uh, when when it gets. Uh, um yeah yeah All when right. testing uh, your your setup um just let it run for hours and see if if your computer heats up uh, but also keep in mind that uh, um uh, you need to also do the streaming for example the streaming costs a lot of uh, uh cpu performance and and uh, uh power performance and uh, this needs to be in your test as well so stream to any any uh yeah white create a <laughs> demo account or whatever and, and yeah. stream to youtube and facebook and whatever all right so more questions uh what about the windows version and uh Yofi just uh also uh responded to that uh, we're using technology specific to the Mac platform um, and uh, it allows us to cram a lot of functionality in a very small application so the download is I think around 50 megabytes right now and if you look at all the features we have and all the functionality then that's uh, pretty astonishing and it's also only possible because all the magic is really provided by uh, the Mac operating system uh, the H.264 encoding is done by the hardware. Um, uh, we don't have any code running there. Uh, our graphics is created by something called Quartz Composer, uh, and um, and and that's easy to uh, program. And uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of things that make uh, um, make it uh, hard to um, put port this over to Windows um, and. Uh, at this stage, we don't have any plans to do that. Um, another tech question at this point, uh, Stepan, how to record raw video from source for backup uh, while recording program out? So, uh, as I said, we're working on, uh, we're working on something like that uh, for one of the next versions. Uh, which would allow you to set up multiple recordings um, and choose uh, the sources and the program out and maybe even specific layers. Uh, we don't have that figured out yet exactly, uh, but uh, watch out for the new beta versions and uh, just uh, it, it, it will be coming. It, it is coming. It, um, we are already coding on it. Um, uh, also, NDI uh, is moving forward to version 4 and they offer a uh, new system for recording, uh, ISO recording, um, as you can uh, capture NDI sources from multiple computers at the same time. Um, there is going to be a, uh, um, gonna be, uh, a feature that allows you to just record the stream to a disk uh, but keep in mind that uh, you need a lot of uh, you know bandwidth and uh, need a fast uh, hard drive to be able to record multiple uh, recordings at the same time all right oh, the uh, questions are coming uh, keep coming keep coming in uh, I, I hope we can keep up here 
Uh, Ray asks, uh, do you guys provide full trial versions? Achim, I don't know exactly how that works, but I think you can download Nemo Life just use it for how long and then it but i think it has a uh, it has a uh, watermark in it right the demo version so uh, the free trial is 40 mi uh, 40 uh, uh, 14 days uh, after that there is a watermark in the video output ah okay so you can try it for free for 14 days um, if you have any uh, specific requirements uh, you need to figure out uh, uh, to convince uh, a purchase, uh, a larger purchase, then, uh, then uh, contact us and we will uh, set you up with a longer trial. Um, Douglas has uh, interesting questions uh, today. So I have my Mac as my music computer with Nemo Life on it, but also a PC next to it for gaming and 3D graphics that I also want to stream. How would I incorporate that into the stream? Um, of course, you can just uh, get a uh, capture device uh, to capture the HDMI uh, output from your PC into uh, Nemo Life. Uh, that's the easiest way. There may be other other uh, ways to do it, like uh, using a uh, the uh, a scan converter, the NDI scan converter, which just captures your uh, computer screen and streams it out over NDI. Um, you have to try if that works for you, um, performance-wise, and see how that how that goes. Yeah, um, the NDI um, scan converter is a software actually. It's yeah, just it's a just simple uh, software just that you install yeah. on the on the Windows machine. Um, John Ilson, can you use the NDI output set uh, sent to two systems running in Mimo Life? Yes, you can, and we actually did that uh, uh, in a uh, um, where we uh, used two computers, uh, one for recording uh, and one for the iMac. So we had uh, the second computer hooked up to the projector screen and used the um, camera inputs also on the second computer for showing the speaker on the big screen um, while using the same camera on the other Mac. So um, NDI outputs can be used for multiple computers at the same time and that makes it much easier to do things like that. Uh, you don't have to do any complicated cabling to do this. Um, the follow-up question by Douglas OBS NDI on the PC and then send that to Mimo Life. If you want to capture the screen of the PC, try the NewTek scan converter, um, which is a much more lightweight solution, and also that uh, provides the content of the stream via NDI, uh, and you can capture that in Mimo Life. I would I would uh, try that and let us know how it works for you. And uh, <coughs> and make sure that you have uh, a really big um, Ethernet network. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's got a I lot I'm of data. I'm not sure who is playing with our account there. I think we got hacked. Hot news: <laughs> Meme Live Five Point O O O Point One is under development. <laughs> <laughs> ah yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, Mr. Professor Mathematical. Uh, the greatest app of all times just keeps getting better. Thank you. Thank you also for the kind words. Thank you. Um, a follow-up question, I think. Uh, maybe we weren't. Can't a Mac Pro support more than two Blackmagic Mini Quarters? The Mac Pro has, I think, six um, uh, Thunderbolt inputs, so it can support more than two Blackmagic Mini recorders. However, uh, those six Thunderbolt uh, connectors are organized in two um, buses. And uh, so you back basically have three connectors per bus, or is it two connectors per three buses? I don't know exactly. Um, and I would still recommend to use uh, a bl an extender box also with the Mac Pro. Um, because uh, that's just much more cleaner to set up. And not to m uh, forget to mention that uh, the 
mini recorders uh, consume a lot of power from the from the Mac um, and so if you plug in two mini recorders to one th Thunderbolt bus then the power is exceeded on that bus so that's one of the main problems connecting to many uh, mini recorders to to uh, to the Mac all right All right, Douglas. Uh, nice. Uh, I think that's a follow-up to one of the claims I made on my 2013 Mac Pro. I do see a big performance hit with 20p, uh, 27, uh, 720p streaming. The reason for that is that the Mac Pro uh, doesn't have a hardware encoder and does all the encoding in software, and the Apple software encoder is not that great. So um, uh, you you see a big performance hit when doing streaming with the Mac Pro. Um, S to to uh, monitor this, you can open up the activity monitor by Apple and uh, watch out for uh, a background task uh, called VT encoder, and this will eat up one one CPU at least for for each of your your video streams. Or maybe two. <laughs> All right. Alternative plan. Oliver, what's the brand and model of the microphone you're using currently? This this little no, this this little thing. So the, the yellow things are the Apple um uh Air AirPods. Um I'm using those for uh just for uh listening in um and they look nicely inconspicuous and I don't have a cable. So they are just my headphones, um, but the microphone is this little thing here. Uh, it's a Countryman mic. Uh, it's an E6 by Countryman. It's, an, it's a fantastic microphone, uh, great sound and almost invisible. I recommend that if you are in front of a camera um, and in the studio, that's a very good uh, microphone. Achim uh, has a budget microphone with oh. a budget headset. <laughs> <laughs> Because I my, have all my, the countrymen mics. My sons mics recommended to me to uh, to buy a, uh, a, uh, a Razer headset <laughs> uh, for uh, a gamers gamers headset. They, they love the the glow. Yes. Douglas, uh, another feature request. The one thing that would be very useful is the ability to use a user specified. A uh, chain of audio units per source. If you want uh, to use a, a third-party compression like Fab Filter or Waves, thank you for the uh, feature request. Uh, that's been on our list for quite a while, and uh, uh, unfortunately, we do have more pressing issues right now. <laughs> but uh, we will be able to get back to that. Uh, uh, Yofi, uh, thank you for looking up the. Uh, Power gadget URL. Uh, uh, um, Winston, thank you for posting. Thank you for joining the live stream and for posting this question. Can you use Photoshop files as graphics in Nemo Life? Achim, how can we use Photoshop files? Yes, you can just uh, drag and drop Photoshop files uh, to Mimo Live. Uh, however, we are just using the composite, uh, the composed uh, final uh, image. Uh, we don't split it up in uh, several layers or images. So, if you have, uh, if you want to use separate layers of your Photoshop file, you need to split them up in different uh, single files. All right. Uh Uh, could you easily push a full 4K source as NDI across a network? I would say the answer is yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, or maybe. <laughs> so, um, uh, Mimo Life certainly can play out 4K, uh, and we can all play out 4K over NDI. Um, but keep in mind that uh, that's really a lot of data. Um, NDI is uncompressed, uh, so it's uh, 4K un uncompressed. Uh, and the network um, 4K and NDI, I don't know if that is a story yet, uh, but you can uh, do that um, uh, certainly. Um, 
So th there is some compression happening, but it's lossless, I guess. And, yes, uh, yes lossless. Uh, uh, yeah. And so uh, the uncompression uh, in in the in the Mimo Live Mac uh, will take uh, some CPU performance, I I suppose. An interesting question by alternative plan. What's the plan for post quartz composer Mimo Life? When you when do you expect to have to be ready for that? That is a question that will be answered next Monday in the <laughs> keynote uh, of the Worldwide Developers Conference. Uh, Apple has uh, been talking about deprecating or uh, has deprecated quartz composer a long time ago. Uh, they haven't been removed. Uh, they haven't removed it yet, uh, and we will have to see if they do uh, from the next version. Uh, if they do, then we have to uh, come up with a solution before the new operating system comes to market, and we will have talk to talk about that uh, when it's time to do that. All right, John Idelson, can you control talky lights on the NDI cameras? Um, I assume you mean the, uh, the, uh, the um, talky lights. Uh, I, I assume you mean the, uh, the, the light that tells you that the camera is on. And yes, uh, the NDI source shows uh, that the camera is on. Um, we call it tele light, actually. Tele light, tele light. So. Yeah, tele light. That's the that's the word. Tele light. Uh, you threw me off with the talky lights <laughs> because there's also talkback, which is a feature that NDI also supports, um, uh, which allows uh, theoretically to uh, talk back to the person uh, running the camera. Um, and uh, tele light is supported. Um, Mimo Life sends the live status of the source back to the source, so. If the source is uh, visible on screen, it will have a, li a live indicator, and uh, we will, uh, and that will also show up on the camera. All right, Bastian, guys, fantastic show, fantastic release. Hope you s to see you soon in person. Yeah, come come on by whenever you feel like it. Maybe next Monday. Uh, there's a little uh, event going on, uh, starting at about 5 p.m. All right. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Douglas Carl Michael, I bet the audio latency on the AirPods can be distracting with the audio going to Mimo Life and back through the iPod, through the pods. So I'm just using the pods to listen into the audio aux um, uh, uh, channel output, uh, so I can hear Achim and uh, and uh, uh, and I do have a mix minus setup, so I don't hear myself. So um, there's no problem. Um, Stefan came up with a question. I don't know if it's uh, in the YouTube channel as well. Let me uh, invest them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so Go ahead. there's an NDI plugin for Adobe Premiere and After Effects. And uh, yes, you, we can uh, receive the NDI data from it. Yeah, so that's a that's a very cool thing. Uh, if you edit in uh, after if uh, if, the, if you edit in uh, Premiere, uh, then you can just hit the play button, and the uh, the uh, the live uh, playout will just be sent over NDI. So that allows you to quickly edit stuff like uh, hot news or breaking news, uh, and just immediately play them out into Mimo Live um, via the network without having to uh, um, render and save it and transfer it or something like that. You just, just play it and l out live. And NDI is really, really cool. And there's lots of uh, use cases like that um, uh, for uh, Mimo Life and all the NDI in, um, universe that's, um, that's growing out there. So more comments. Um, by Douglas, uh, as a passionate supporter of Mimo Life, I applaud your move to introduce a non-profit license. Is it a free license for eligible users 
or just cost reduced it is not clear on the website itself so yeah the <laughs> interesting comment thank you for that um the website um, the non-profit version is cost reduced um, and um, in order to access the store for that you have to fill out a form that uh, uh, tells us why you think you're eligible uh, the, uh, the non-profit version is basically for people not making money with Mimo Life. Um, for example, um, K through 12 school schools, um, teachers, uh, students, um, and uh, for example, volunteers at non-profit organizations such as churches who spend their own time and money um, to uh, purchase those stuff and uh, do a, a stream. Uh, uh, or private people using Mimo Life just for fun uh, in the basement. Um, oh, that sounded kind of strange, but <laughs> um, uh, but uh, uh, run their own TV studio from their living room, for example. Um, Adam Fenton has a question. Any plans for future support of Adobe products, importing PSD layers, working with Premiere, and etc.? We started working on a layer that was able to import um, uh, Photoshop layers. But the issue, of course, is that you want them at different, uh, different uh, places in your layer stack. And uh, that means that it's much more uh, Transparent to just render out the the layers and use them where they want where you want to lose use them right. Achim, any comments on that? And I talked about Premiere. Um, of course, you can always play the movies that you save in Premiere, but uh, with NDI you can also use uh, the direct playout. Uh, mm. Ah, yes, Paduka 2, feature request, scoreboard output into the scorekeeper layer. I have a, uh, <laughs> I have a hunch who that is, actually, I think. <laughs> Thank you for the feature request. Um, um, it is theoretically possible to do this, not with the standard layers, but uh, uh, we need to, if, if, if you're looking at a specific scoreboard, uh, then um, uh, if the scoreboard uh, somehow um, provides the information in an, an electronically readable form, we can uh, certainly, there's uh, is a way to implement that. There's just no standard way for all the scoreboards. Um, uh, what was, Achim, what was the, uh, the name of that service um, that we, co we got contacted last week by Sports Cast. <coughs> sports Cast. Sports Cast and Sports Cast um, provides the content for scoreboards or from scoreboards in a uh, web page form, HTML form, HTML5 form, and you can just use that with um, with the web browser source and uh, display the information in your life if you want to. So that's something you could uh, look into. Yeah, or uh, we, we have an API actually, so you can uh, push data into your uh, Mimo Live document. And uh, it's uh, documented also in the docs.mimo live web page. Yep. All right, There's also see. samples how to push data to the document. Um. Feature request, please, uh, please add a layer by Yufi. Thank you for the feature request and thank you also for all the comments you send us uh, all the time. Um, please add a layer like a basketball layer, but for one person. You, you need to specify that more specifically, please. Uh, you know how to reach us and we will uh, see if we can do that. Um, John. Uh, that's the right uh, uh, time to mention that you can also create your own layers. Um, also, the the um, the protocol we defined is uh, publicly available also in the documentation, 
and uh, yeah, we can discuss. And also, this we further. offer um, offer uh, a service that uh, customers can buy to make those layers, um, and uh, and w there's really no limit to what you can do um, converting any data to graphics um, uh, in any way. All right, John, uh, thank you guys so much. If only all developers were as open and available as the Boeing's team, that is makes us very proud to hear that. Thank you. And we will do our best to keep it that way. Thank you very much. Um, uh, da, da, da. Um, oh yeah, alternative plan, just another suggestion. There's an interesting scoreboard option called scoreboard OC OCR. Unfortunately, it's Windows only. I love that option in Mimo Life. I've seen that um, and kind of a nice little plug here for Mimo Life and what we can do is that um, you can use a, uh, a camera and point it at the scoreboard and use the um, layer with distortion or is it um, is that the layer with distortion? Yes, to no, it's a deskew layer, a uh, deskew filter, the deskew filter. filter. You can use the deskew filter on that uh, camera source, and then uh, just grab out the uh, place the deskew mask onto the scoreboard, and it will deskew and make it square and uh, nice, and then you can use that as a source anywhere on your screen, and just use the uh, display from the scoreboard uh, in in the in the in the live stream um, uh, if that is that is that might be a solution for some people um, all right so I think I have all the questions covered that have been posted so far uh, you guys are fantastic thank you for all the comments and uh, it's always fun to talk to you and uh, and uh, if we don't have any uh, questions coming in anymore, then I think we should wrap this up. Um, uh, let me just check if I got all the questions. Yes, um, looks like that. Um, and uh, we've been going for over an hour and a half. Uh, I think uh, everybody deserves uh, <laughs> to... Uh, to, um, to uh, go home now uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, just to recap uh, this is the being the uh, live uh, stream uh, for the Mimo Live 5 release Achim did a good demo of the new templates and uh, new template workflow of the layer sets which is the big new feature uh, and uh, and we talk, talked uh, told you about uh, the uh, other new features and fixes and we had a lot of questions answered uh, thank you everybody for joining us uh, if you keep the questions coming we try to answer them in writing we also have a new forum up uh, we've uh, changed the forum software to a more modern forum uh, at forum.boings.com uh, we will we are available for all the questions you might have and uh, Achim, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you also to all the Boeing's employees uh, who uh, make this great software and uh, possible uh, and work hard every day. And uh, we will be back with more Q&A uh, hopefully soon. All right, then uh, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you very much. Bye-bye.